We hear a lot of talk about climate change right now in the world today. We hear about natural disasters and people are saying that there is an increased frequency as well as an increased intensity of these natural disasters. And that may be absolutely true. People say out there that if we don't save our planet, we're not going to have a future. Our children, our grandchildren are not going to have a place to live. They are not going to have a functional society. They may not have a world at all. The Bible says in Psalm 24, 1, the earth is the Lord's and all it contains, the world and those who dwell in it. The earth, as the Bible asserts, is the Lord's. It is not ours. He created it and we did not. We did not create it and we cannot save it. Climate change, while the effects in some way may not be false at all, they may be absolutely true, but what climate change is and the doctrine behind it is a false religion. Think about a religion and what a religion is. There is a reverence for a life-giving entity. There is a doctrine, there are teachings behind it that they assert to be true. There are beliefs about it. There is membership offered. There are meetings that are had, there are service projects that you can do, and money to be collected. Climate change offers all of these things. And this is a counterfeit church, and the earth is its false god. The Bible says in Romans chapter 1 and verse 25, For they exchanged the truth of God for a lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator who is blessed forever. They worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator. Climate change asks us to serve the creation with no regard for the Creator. The doctrine of climate change asks us to believe that man not only has created the effects of the weather and things that happen in the world that we see now, but that we have the power to reverse its effects control the earth and change the weather. This is false. And not only false, this is bordering, if not firmly on the territory of blasphemy, as it places man in the seat of the one who did create and can control and does submit the creation to his voice alone. The Bible says, in Matthew chapter 8, when the disciples were on the sea and there was a great storm and they feared that they would drown because of the wind and the waves and the great tumult, the scripture says they went and they woke Jesus up and it says that Jesus said to them, Why are you afraid, you men of little faith? Then he, he Jesus, got up and rebuked the winds and the sea and it became perfectly calm. The men were amazed and said, what kind of a man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? What kind of a man is this that even the winds and the sea obey him? The earth, the creation, storms, the power that we see, lightning and thunder, those things only obey the voice of their sole creator, the Lord Jesus Christ. The disciples on the boat thousands of years ago recognized this fact and they asked, who is this that the wind and the sea obey him? Climate change asks us to say, if we can do certain things, if we work together, if we have uh, different kind of philosophies and different efforts toward the earth itself, that it will obey what we want. It will submit to what we hope and it will, it will act like we want it to act. I assure you, it will not, because we are not its creator, and we are not its God, and it does not submit to us. There is one that it submits to. A false religion subverts this truth and places man in a blasphemous place. The doctrine of climate change blinds man to what these natural disasters and these weather phenomenon really are, which are warning signs from Almighty God himself to man. The Bible says in Luke chapter 21 and verse 11, And there will be great earthquakes, and there are. And in various places plagues and famines, and there are. 
and there will be terrors and great signs from heaven. That's what these things are, signs from heaven. And down in verse 25, it says, There will be signs and sun and moon and stars, and on the earth dismay among nations, in perplexity at the roaring of the sea and the waves. All of that is true. Men fainting from fear and the expectation of the things which are coming upon the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. But when these things begin to take place, straighten up, lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Please understand, creation is a trumpet in God's hand, calling men everywhere to recognize His power and repent and believe in Jesus for salvation while there is still time. Climate change deafens us to this warning. Today, climate change is a warning. The storms, the natural disasters, the plagues, the famines, the wars, and the rumors of wars that Jesus warned us about that are absolutely happening before our very eyes. Today, it's a warning. One day, the creation itself will be a tool of God's judgment on rebellious and sinful man that rejects this truth, rejects his reality, rejects the Savior, and chooses instead to seek to worship and serve the creature over the Creator. God will use the creation that man made and held up as a false idol, as a tool of judgment in his hand. Revelation chapter 6 tells us how this will go. In verse 12 it says, I looked and he broke the sixth seal and there was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth made of hair and the whole moon became like blood. The stars of the sky fell to the earth as a fig tree casts its unripe figs when shaken by a great wind. The sky was split apart like a scroll when it is rolled up and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Then the kings of the earth and the great men, and the commanders, and the rich, and the strong, and every slave and free man hid themselves in the caves and among the rocks of the mountains. And they said to the mountains and to the rocks, Fall on us, hide us from the presence of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come. And who is able to stand? There is one way to stand. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus as Lord, and believe in your heart God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved.